Made of news today. This is Congressman John Sullivan, and I watch Native News Today. Greetings out there in TV land. Welcome to the 105th episode of Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman. With me, as always, Mr. G. Woff, Gerald Wofford, affectionately known as G. Woff out there to our viewing audience. Gerald, what's going on, brother? Well, I'll tell you what, it's always nice to uh, be back out there in uh, the highways and byways, finding mm -hmm. out what's going on out in Indian country. Absolutely, Gerald, and that's what you were doing once again this week, and we uh, got to, we got to uh, by way of your videoing, got to uh, take a look at one of the most popular Indian festivals that there is in all of the United States, and it happens right here in Oklahoma City. I'm talking about Red Earth. Yeah, that's right. We ventured out in western Oklahoma where another uh, year of the Red Earth Art Festival Pow Wow was going on and they also had a parade to kick off all the festivities. It was just all a great time so we kind of put together a little news story telling about some of the events happening at the Red Earth Art Festival. Hundreds lined the streets of downtown Oklahoma City on Friday, June 6th in anticipation of the Red Earth Festival Parade. Other events of the festival included a powwow, as well as an art market, which included a unique variety of Native American artists displaying their unique creations. A lot of things happening here at the Red Earth Art Festival here, and I'm talking with uh, one of the ladies here who works with the uh, Cherokee Heights facilities. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we grew up in the hood outside Pryor, Oklahoma, near Sportsman Acres, actually at a housing authority called Cherokee Heights. I'm talking with the claimed Cherokee artist Tracy Rabbit. Tracy, appreciate your time, and as we mentioned, we're here at Red Earth. Uh, a lot of things going on. Why do you come to Red Earth? Well, we've been coming here for 22 years come here to fellowship with all the other artists, uh, see the dancing, great, wonderful Native American event, uh, matter of fact, premier event in Oklahoma. Glad that it's still going on. All right, great things happening out here at the Red Earth Art Festival, and I'm here with a very dear friend and a great artist, I think you all know who I'm talking about, Ms. Dana Tiger right here. Dana, this is, as we mentioned, it's a great festival, a lot of people around and everything. What do you find special about coming here to Red Earth? Well, I mostly enjoy bringing the youth art to Red Earth. That is so much uh, fun for me. I have my youth organization where I work with the Indian kids in art, and so when I get to bring their work in here and sometimes they win awards, it's, it's a big thrill for me. That's the best thing about it. Well, we know you've won a lot of awards, but you recently had a family member win an award too. Tell us about that. Well, here at Red Earth, my son um, won uh, second place in sculpture. What's his name? Coleman Leeson Tiger Blair. All right, and you got one of his artworks right here. What is this? Tell us about this, please. Well, a couple of months ago, we did a little video taping my grandma and my son while she talked Creek to him while he sculpted. And she told him that he needed to, to do the clans talking. So he went back to the gallery, and this is his piece that he did of um, a lot of the Creek clans, some that I don't know if they're still family members of but um, we've got like let's see three four five six seven eight nine of the different clans bird otter bear mole r raccoon skunk wolf beaver and alligator and they're having a conversation it's called council of the clans look at that camera you got this you got to squat down a little yeah there you go okay all right, all the activities happening here at the Red Earth Art Festival as we see people walk funny in front of the camera here in giraffe-like <laughs> style here. Hey, here with the very special friend, man here who helps all the artwork here happen here at Red Earth. I'm talking other than, none other than acclaimed silversmith artist, Mr. Kenneth Johnson. I, I got to 
Got to tell a little history about both of us here, man. We both met at OU when we were both uh, just struggling artists, or, or, or artists, I should say, here. He was, he was the artist here. It's funny, I was the engineer and he was the art major. And I ended up in the arts and... And, uh, You're the engineer. and I'm still engine. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, we won't say that. You know, I thought of you the other day, Gerald, and I was driving down the road and the and, uh, check engine light came on in my car. So I called you. That was good, you know. That was, uh, that's what John Wayne said when he was in the desert, you know. He said, hmm. When his car stalled, he said, must be engine trouble. Yeah. Well, we're not here to tell bad Indian jokes. We're actually here because. As I said, this is claimed silversmith Kenneth Johnson makes his home now in Santa Fe. Kenneth, I know you go to art shows all over the country and even all over the world too. What makes this art festival, the Red Earth Art Festival, what makes it so special to come back to? Well, Red Earth, uh, I went to my first Red Earth show in 1985 and I bought a ring for my mom for $19. I remember it was funny and uh, yeah, I didn't know I was going to be a jeweler and be in, in this art world. So for me to come back, I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I've been out there for almost 20 years. But to come back to Red Earth and Oklahoma City, where I grew up, then uh, this is special. It's good to meet old classmates and people that I grew up with. So that's why I enjoy coming back. Go see my family, uh, go hang out West Side Tulsa a little bit, and just come visit. A lot of artists here, a lot of things happening here at the Red Earth Art Festival. Mr. Elmer Young Atsuna, we appreciate his time. And, uh, sir, before we let you get away, can you give us a uh, Hopi greeting to our audience out there? Yeah, I'd like to say Hambio. In our language, that means uh, what are you guys up to? And Kakwa, uh, Gunda, then those two languages, the first one I said was in Hopi. And the second one I said, Gunda, is in Tewa. And I hope that you have a joyful uh view of what, uh, what's going on here and uh, next time we we're uh, having the show again come on down Hi, Elmer. What Gunda. all right great job there and I'm sure you had a wonderful time out at Red Earth we always do when we go so it, it's a wonderful thing there at the Arts Festival but another art form is the art of music and out at the Osage Million Dollar Elm Casino the Native Fusion Tour allowed you to stop off and talk to Mr. Keith Sokola that's right. The Native Fusion concert stopped in Tulsa last week, Million Dollar Elm Casino. Got a chance to talk with Mr. Sokola about his music and the inspiration behind it. He said that you said, he said, that she said, you said, she said, that he said, you said, he said, that she said, you said, he said. Native American music was rocking the house at the Osage Million Dollar Elm Casino today. And one of the gentlemen that contributed to that is Mr. Keith Sokola right here and his group entitled, well, I'll let him tell the name of his band. Before we do that, Mr. Sokola, appreciate your time. Great concert. Thanks. Uh, good to be here. Uh, hello, everybody out there. All right. Your band has a unique name. Share with us that name. Well, the band is called the Wild Band of Indians, and it kind of started with uh, all native lineups in the late 80s and things and through the different aberrations of it and different versions of it we decided to keep the name people like it some people are afraid of it but mostly it's a conscious name about the um, stereotyping that has happened to our people it's kind of a, a rebel kind of a name to kind of make us more conscious about the things, the injustices to our people without making people feel bad. I mean, wild band of Indians, everybody have heard of that. You know, you're walk, acting like a wild Indian or something like that. And so we just have a little bit of fun. Sometimes uh, marquees won't put it on the marquee or something like that. And they think like, where are the racist ones? But I say the W is just an upside down M because we're the mild band of Indians compared to the wild behavior bestowed upon our people. I want to ask you a question here that you are certainly qualified to answer. What is native music to you? Well, <clears throat> I think if we have to think about it to define it, it's almost as easy as breathing in that sense, and it should be natural in that sense. I think like the flute, today I played the flute. I feel 
every native should play the flute like our ancestors did. I think music was around in the atmosphere, it was around in the environment, it's in the birds, it's in this uh, sound that we hear of the air conditioner and the gambling machines. All these things are part of what music is as a native person. But I think music, it has four levels. One, entertainment level. Two, a, a philosophical level. Three, um, spiritual level. And four, metaphysical. Is, uh, it might mean something to you. It might mean something to me. It might mean something to her or the next person. But I think if music hits on them four levels, a song, it's a deep song. And there can be songs that are just entertaining or songs that are philosophical. But I think when songs become important to the people, you become an important songwriter to the people. And so Indian Cars, I feel even though it's about a car that's dented and beat up, it really is about this powerful machine, the native nation. You know, it's really strong and it's a tongue-in-cheek humor. And so all those things I think are native music to me. Native American music artist, Mr. Keith Sakola. Hoka! Miigwech! All right, we're rolling right along here on Native News today, and I guess you could kind of say this uh, episode has a festival flair to it. We went to the uh, Native Fusion Festival, the Red Earth Festival, and now the granddaddy of them all, the Muscogee Creek Nation Festival, right here in Altmulgee. Gerald, United in Spirit is the theme this year. It's going to be a great thing. That's right. As always, the third weekend in June marks the Creek Nation Festival, and we covered it as only Native News Today can. Taking a look at this year's festival, me and Mr. Thompson Gouch. All right, if you folks out there don't know any information about the Creek Nation Festival going on in the next couple weekends, well, then it's a good thing you tuned in today because we're about to give you the flat-out rundown. Yes, that's right. We are here on the grounds of the softball fields at the Muscogee Creek Nation Claude Cox Omniplex, and I'm here with Mr. Thompson Gouge, Public Relations Officer at the Muscogee Creek Nation. He's going to tell us everything we need to know to get us ready for a big holiday couple of weekends here at the Muscogee Creek Nation. And first of all, G, I just want to tell you uh, we're glad it's this time of year again, and I know everybody's excited about it. Most definitely. It's always excellent time of the year for a festival, rain or shine. So we're... <laughs> We're expecting a great crowd this year with all the things that are about to take place here within the next couple of weeks here. Yeah, and we'll talk about some of those things. Like going on today, uh, Saturday, right now, is the slow pitch softball competition. That's why we're here at the softball grounds taking a look at everything. And that's going to be going on right now. And if you're out there and out and about and you ain't got anything going on, come on out to the Cod Cox Omniplex. There'll be some great slow pitch softball action going on, men's and co-ed division. So hopefully it's not rained. Hopefully the uh, fields are in good condition out there. We uh, we don't want to see anybody getting too muddy or anything like that. But also, Thursday got the stomp dance coming up, and I know all of our Creek people are excited about that one too. Right. They have a, a kickoff for the stomp dance with the, Mr. David Proctor, and his grounds always kind of put on the uh, stomp dance, which was on Thursday. will begin at 6 o'clock. And that's and right over here. At the right over here in front of the stage, the main stage of the Omniplex. So. Right. Everybody is welcome. They have a feed at 6 o'clock, so if you've never been to one of these, you're, everyone is welcome to participate. Yeah, everybody gets some food, gets some stuff like that. It's a great thing to come to and always got a good crowd at the Stomp Dance. And that's no you know, that's no big surprise. <laughs> Creek people, a lot of the ceremonial faction love their Stomp Dancing and they come out here and uh, show up in droves for that special event for the festival. That's just a few things we're going to talk about. And G's going to take me around a little bit. We're going to visit some of the sites. So you guys just follow with us and uh, we'll be hitting the sites, telling you what's going to be going on right there. All right, we've made our way over to the big stage here, and uh, this is where it'll all be going down. Now, I'm talking about the entertainment portion of the festival, and this is always one of the favorites going on, and this year will be no different. I'm talking about Friday night, we got a big time country superstar coming in, Mr. John Anderson. And uh, if anything John Anderson has taught us, it's to not ask her on a straight tequila night, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, seriously, G, tell us a little bit about John Anderson coming in and some of the other acts on Friday night, too. Well, Friday night, yes, our big headliner, our country headliner, is John Anderson. Uh, many, I mean, he has so many songs. I mean, he's very his historic in his music and does a great job. And uh, everybody should be familiar with what he sings, you know. 
very popular song with a lot of the Native Americans is a Seminole Wind song. So. He, he wrote that uh, 30 minutes after he went to a fried bread dinner. <laughs> Probably. <Golly. laughs> <laughs> but no, but, and, and Aragon Star. Aragon Star, yes, she is a, a Kickapoo, but she is also a Creek, mm -hmm. and she will be helping perform and MC the whole uh, festival here at the entertainment stage. And along with, uh, we have Friday, uh, Saturday night, yes. we have the World Classic Rockers. That'll be a week from tonight, today, actually. A week from today, right. uh, we have uh, former band members of Toto, Steppenwolf, Journey, Boston. And Leonard Skinner, and so wow. these are they've got great music, and yeah. each band member will perform the the uh, songs from wow. wherever, whatever band they did come from. So, so if I if I can't find my members only coat, can I borrow yours? Yes. <laughs> or my uh, my sleeves cut off of my jean jacket. But you have to have the French roll at the bottom, though. <laughs> Absolutely, I'll make sure to have that. But now, every time we have the the entertainment portion of the festival, you look out here in front of us, and we're on this big grand stage here, and they're getting ready, as you can see. But every time there's a sea of people out here, and it'll be no different. I'm sure on Friday night when John Anderson hits this stage, there's going to be a lot of people out here. Oh, definitely. There, I'm. We're expecting a pretty good crowd this year. You know. And one of the good things about it is, tell them how much it costs them to come out and check out the uh, concert. It is free. It costs you nothing to come and watch these great acts here at the Tribe. Yeah, it's a five-finger discount, so to speak, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, everybody will uh, be out and about. It's going to be great. Now, if you didn't get that Friday at, uh, I, I don't know, 6 o'clock is when it starts, right? Yes, actually, we're, we're beginning at 5.30 with Principal Chief Eddie Ellis is going to have his living legends here at the main stage. Exactly in which we'll be giving away a free car uh -huh. along with uh, after that we'll be having a five hundred dollar drawings okay. with that same ticket that you'll have and of course those this night will be only for the creek citizens the friday night for the car and the 500 but the next night we'll have the uh john deere riding a lawnmower that will be raffling off everybody buys a two dollar chance yeah. in that and they also will also be able to have five hundred dollar drawings as well. So. Absolutely. So if you uh, want to take a check uh, check out of that uh, John Deere lawnmower, it's looking all clean and gleam. It's sitting in the uh, complex right now. Right. So it's a little bit past the uh, PBX operators, right. the ladies answering the phones. You can't miss it right there. And right now we got the uh, new newly crowned Miss Muskogee Creek Nation, Elizabeth Gray. She's yes. uh, holding down the fort. She is holding down the fort, taking the money, giving the tickets away. And if if you, it's here at the complex mm -hmm. here. On, just come right through the front door. You'll see the, the John Deere tractor right there, and they'll be waiting to take your money. Yes. Anybody interested will be taking uh, money tickets until the, the night of the drawing. So, so all the way will have a chance. Right. Yeah, all the way up until. If you are a Creek citizen, you don't want to miss out on this drawing. And if you're not a Creek citizen, hey, we're sorry. It's the Creek Fest. All right, we are standing in a very dangerous place, or what will be a dangerous place this time next weekend. We are at the Bob Arrington Rodeo Arena, and uh, gee, this just became the Bob Arrington Rodeo Arena, and we at the Muskogee Creek Nation are so proud to be able to honor that great man with this wonderful arena that he had so much to do with getting it built. Yes, he did, and he's been a very great big part of the tribe for many, many years, and you know, he was he's one of the, not because of his age, he was one of the oldest uh, employees here at the tribe and and he's done so much here you know not just not just the festival but the tribe in general in his department the tribal driveways and we, we're sure going to miss him this year absolutely we are going to miss him but uh the, it, it goes on here at the muskogee creek nation rodeo and he would be very proud of what we got this year we have a professional rodeo cowboys association sanctioned event right here for the first time at the creek festival and we are sitting right here at the bull shoots man this is going to be a good time and uh, i'm glad we're here now <laughs> instead of when they bring in those yeah, horned exactly. animals exactly Exactly. I wouldn't be here. You couldn't pay me. <laughs> yeah, if I told you I was going to be here, it would be bull, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, uh, gee, this for the first time ever, like I said, PRCA event, and I know that you guys are very happy with the way it's being coordinated and what's going to go down here next weekend. Yes, Mr. Tom Reeves is uh, actually a world champion bronc rider, I believe, and uh, and he was just recently, uh, you know, in the uh, put into the PRCA rodeo uh 
Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah. And, and yeah. he's going to be out here with many other Cowboys that will be participating. And he's doing a great job getting a lot of sponsorships. And, mm -hmm. and this is going to be great for, here for the tribe this year. Yeah, I believe so. This has always been one of the uh, top draws of the festival. I think you can say this along with the softball competitions. Yeah. But the festival, a lot of people out there know, let's give them a little history lesson. The festival actually started as the Muscogee Creek Nation Rodeo. Oh, yeah. right. And uh, it was later added as the Muscogee Creek Nation Rodeo and Festival. Uh -huh. Now it's just a festival. We're united in spirit, but we're also united in our love for the Bronx and the blood and the bulls and the mud. They call the thing the rodeo. Wow, I thought yeah. that was Garth Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was from UConn, didn't you? I thought she was from UConn. Hey. No, 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 but uh, we're just having a lot of fun out here. You can tell me and this guy we're fun-loving guys, and that's what the festival is all about. It's about coming out and having some fun. So many events going on, and uh, one of the things also I want to talk about a little bit, too, is the parade that goes on downtown Altmoggy. You don't want to miss that. This year, the Grand Marshal will be none other than Native American actor, Mr. Larry Sellers. Mr. Larry Sellers. And, he, and if you don't know Larry Sellers out there, I'm sure you do and just don't know it because... Larry was actually played the part of the weird naked Indian on Lands World 2. It wasn't G. G wasn't the weird naked Indian. No matter what this guy tells you, it wasn't him. It was Larry Sellers. And uh, Larry's actually been on Native News Today before with us and visited with Larry. And the guy's just world class, awesome dude. And uh, he's got a lot to, uh, a lot of stories to tell, a lot of things uh, uh, that he's, uh, that I find interesting about him just because I love movies and things like that. He talks a lot about the, uh, the film world and the entertainment world, but it's a very good thing to have Larry come down and be the Grand Marshal of the parade. Exactly. You know, every year, you know, Irene Coley has been in charge of the parade these past years and she has done a great job and, and she's, I mean, it just gets greater and better every year. All right, I'm out here on site at the Muscogee Creek Nation Capitol Complex, right here with the brush shoppers in the background, and that can only mean one thing. But I'll tell you what, for this next segment, I can't do it on my own. I'm going to need a little help. I'm going to need a little help by way of my special telepathic powers. So I will now teleport Jared Moore into the shot from behind the camera. All right, Jared Moore here joining us, and uh, very nice. And uh, I just want to say, at home, don't be alarmed. I know my powers are creepy, but uh, that's the only time I'll ever use them, I promise. Jared, got to talk about the uh, the cornstalk shoot going on for the festival right out here. I know you guys are excited about it. Well, it's Saturday the 21st during festival at high noon. There's going to be, uh, I'm sure everybody that's a, a loyal viewer of the show has seen our bow making segments with Mike Berryhill. Part of that cultural re reclamation of our ancient skills is the development of a bow makers and bow shooter society here, kind of like how the Cherokees have. Right. And we're going to have a traditional dress and traditional bow shoot here with uh, Mike Berryhill, Judge Patrick Moore is going to be out here. I'm going to be out here. Signing uh, autographs. Yeah, yeah. And it's all going to be um, uh, traditional, like uh, right after. Uh, European arrival and pre-European dress with uh, deer skin and everything. It'll be really interesting. If you've never seen anything like that, you guys should come out and check it out. We'll be shooting all afternoon. Also, I think they're going to have betting. Nice. I don't know. It's it's it, it's legal. Okay. You could come down. You could place your bets. See who's going to score the most the most points. It'll be the first time anything like this has been done. What if I put money on you? Am I going to win? Probably. Nice. Nice. I love the confidence. I love the confidence. Now. You mentioned and alluded to the fact that our loyal viewers of the show are definitely going to know what's going down if they've been watching and seeing the stuff that Mike Berryhill's done with the bow shoots, the bow making, the arrow making, all of that. Now, this sort of, Jared, is a culmination of all of that and being able to bring this to the festival in such, an, uh, in such a, basically a grand stage, you know, to have everybody come out and really embrace this. This is exciting for everybody that's involved in the, in the project. Well, our hope is that Maybe some of the youth and or just pe tribal members or really anybody will, will catch an interest for, for this because this is a skill that there's no need for it now, but it needs to be preserved because it's part of our culture and it, and it's, it follows the seasons and it helps document uh, periods of your life because making these bows isn't something that you do in 30 or 40 minutes in your spare time. It's a year long and process of working the bows and curing the wood and finding the trees and gets you in touch with nature it's a really great project absolutely and uh, i wouldn't be so quick to say that these aren't things you don't need anymore i mean if anybody saw the halloween episode and saw post-apocalyptic saws 
they know <laughs> that one of these days the ways of the American Indian are going to be what gets people through to the other side. Well, if anything else, there's a lot of people now that are, especially in the archery world, are now moving away from compound bows and complicated high-tech equipment back to self bows made out of one piece of wood and uh, primitive primitive style arrows so they you can hunt game with them people have killed uh, animals up to sizes of bears and and who knows how large with weapons just like these the corn stalk shoot that we're going to have on saturday though isn't really a target shoot the, the what happens is the contestants will line up at one end of a hundred yard field and at the other end there'll be a stack of corn stalks. The contestants have special arrows that have a long needle on it. Anybody who's seen the Cherokee corn stalk shoots will recognize them. The, these arrows are shot at a trajectory up into the sky and then they come down and strike the, cor the stack of the corn stalks. Then the points are counted by how many stalks were penetrated by the arrow and whoever has the most points wins the point for that thing and there's two stacks and the contestants then walk down and retrieve their arrows and then they shoot back at the other stack this, that's where the betting comes in because you bet before you shoot you shoot and then you bet coming back the person that's always hitting the stacks that's how the odds start to develop so so yeah so in theory before somebody that shoots uh maybe that's not so good uh you could be like this guy's not going to hit a thing and you can win some money. So come on out. I mean, I'm telling you. But I've seen this guy. He's a dead eye. He's a dead eye. He can hit the thing from, from any area. As a matter of fact, I once saw him overshoot a target by about 50 yards and land in the forest stuck right in a tree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I was shooting at that tree. What, what you didn't see was there was a large panther on the tree or, or a mountain lion type animal. Yes, he posted it. He basically fact, knocked. I actually saved your life that day. Mado. So everybody come on out June 21st, Saturday, high noon, right here at the complex grounds, just to the, I believe, south of the mound building right here. And you will check out the cornstalk shoot, everything that'll be going on. Very, very exciting. Jared, thanks for being with me, man. Appreciate right. it. Uh, you need to teleport me out of the scene. Oh, yes, yes, forgot. Okay, that's going to wrap us up for this week. And uh, we... Gerald, what, what's going on here, man? I'm trying to close the show. You're reading a newspaper. Uh, share with us what you got there. If, if you're going to interrupt, Gerald, at least share with us what you're reading. Well, we're just uh, showing the uh, official newspaper, the Creek Nation, Muskogee Nation News, and we want to let our watchers out there know that starting next month, the Muskogee Nation News will be published twice a month. Bi-monthly, and that's more information out there on the Muskogee Creek Nation for the citizens of the Muskogee Creek Nation, as well as surrounding tribes and other people wanting to know what's going on here at the headquarters in Aunt Maugie. Well, now you're going to get hit with a double dose of information twice a month, and we really think it's a great thing and glad to be able to provide that service. Absolutely. You know, that's part of our job here, you know, to make sure the news gets out there. It's the business that we chose, and we like doing it. Very good. And we also like doing the Native News Today, and we'll be back this time next week. We want to thank you for joining us this week. For Gerald Wofford, Jason Salzman, and all the good people at Native News Today, we'll see you this time next Saturday.